Um, I think the biggest reason I, I decided to leave, it, it kind of came quicker than I expected was that it's now at this point, it's almost costing me money to go to work. Like I'm making more outside, like almost double what I was making at my job to where any time that's spent there is a waste of time at this point. I signed a lease and did rental arbitrage on my first property in March of 2020. Over the next six months from March until September, really just kind of scraped by. I made like 200 bucks yep. one month, you know, lost 150 the next and really wasn't going anywhere with it. You know, still enjoyed it because I was learning, but um, at that, that was the point where I realized like I needed to, to learn what I didn't know. And it's taking me too long to learn that on my own. And so that's when, you know, I reached out to you guys and just on that property, you know, we, we still have that property today. The biggest difference with working with you guys was that I went from making, you know, maybe 200 bucks in a month on that property to now I'm making every month, at least 1500 on that same property. I didn't change anything other than implementing, you know, what BNB bootcamp taught me. So listen, guys, we're excited about this series right now with B and B boot camp. So we oftentimes talk about this as a you know kind of that short-term rental component. If you're excited about this, we're going to drop links below on how you can get involved. In the meantime, though, welcome to the VIP Financial Education YouTube channel where we help you go further, faster financially. We've got a very exciting guest on here today. Uh, and he came, kind of came on at the last moment, uh, reluctantly, because he doesn't want to talk about the money he's been making. Uh, but we dragged him by his ear, or Michael and Katrina did. So we've got Austin Anderson on the channel today. So welcome, Austin. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. So guys, we often talk, uh, obviously, about this, you know, kind of short-term rental scenario. Obviously, the B&B boot camp. We love to do the testimonials. So I can talk to Michael and Katrina until they are blue in the face about their business model and how successful they have been. But when it comes to proof in the pudding, it's who has actually taken that kind of leap of faith, if you will, and gone on board with their coaching. So Austin, tell me about yourself. You know, born and raised here in uh, Idaho area, so north northwest of uh, U.S., um, grew up here, um, always kind of had an entrepreneurship mentality, but never really knew what to do with it. Uh, so, you know, grew up, started working, uh, got into a good corporate job, uh, you know, with like a larger bank uh, in the U.S. and um, kind of enjoyed that and stuff. And then, uh, you know, really got into that world and realized that that's not where I wanted to be. So um, that would be basically it. Uh, no, no college under me or anything like that. Just, uh, just a normal guy. What about real estate experience or what, what, what's your professional background? If you don't mind me asking, uh, professional background would only be finance. Uh, cause before that I was working in the cell phone industry. Um, and then before that I was in high school. So <laughs> still, still pretty young. Uh, but yeah, no, no real estate background whatsoever, other than just learning from some family that have done it, but it very, very basic. Uh, you know, when it comes to like flipping houses or having rentals, that type of thing. Um, so nothing in depth. So I would say real estate, really nothing when it comes to my background. And I, I, I know we're not supposed to ask people this, but how old are you? 25. I just turned 25 this month. Congratulations. I'll be, Thank 25. You. I'll, I'll be 25 next month. Uh, <laughs> That I'm, I'm, I'm a couple months behind you. Um, okay, so a, a handful of pressing questions. So you're in finance. What made you go out there and search for something different? Um, there's there's a couple things. Um, I'm very type A personality, so I don't really like someone being able to tell me what to do and having no choice about it. Uh, so when my boss tells me, you know, you have to be here at 9 a.m. and you can't leave until 5 that just really gets on my nerves because there's stuff that I want to do in between that time that I can't. Uh, so I, I would say that was a big one. Um, and then I've always, you know, I've always really want liked the idea of uh, residual income, um, you know, and kind of researching how to get into things that pay you monthly from work you did before. Um, and so for a long time, I was thinking going and being a financial advisor uh, and helping people with investments and stuff would be the way to go. 
but then I was just learning that, you know, it's going to take forever having to get through four years of, of college. And then I have to get promoted to that position. And then it takes me about 10 years to build that book of business to the income level that I'd want. Then I had, I realized that I'm not going to get to my goal in the amount of time that I want. And so I had to look for other options. And you came across these obviously beautiful folks that we have on here with Michael and Katrina right now. First impressions, what, how'd the relationship start? So relationship started, I actually started a uh, short-term rental in the, the realm of rental arbitrage um, about a year and a half ago, because I'd heard a lot about it and I saw the potential with it and stuff. Um, and started that. And then I started getting into a lot of different Airbnb groups or, you know, uh, short-term rental groups and stuff like that. And along the way had talked with Michael and Katrina, cause I'd seen, um, you know, some posts that they had about the success they were at at the time, which to me seemed crazy, um, where they were at. And so it was more so me reaching out to them to be like, how are you doing it? Got it. Got it. And, uh, so you, you went on board with them, correct? Yeah. Yep. You've been with them how long at this point? Uh, so I started doing coaching with them at the very end of August last year. So one year basically to the date. Okay. Got it. So you're a year in with no real estate experience whatsoever. Right. Other than the six months of uh, arbitrage that I did before, and that would be it. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and my understanding is you had one property at that point. Yep. One property. Where are you at now? Let's talk. Let's talk meat and potatoes. Yeah. So um, as of September, I will be at nine um, and looking like potentially 10 uh, if another one actually goes through like it's supposed to. What's it like inside out for you? What's a day-to-day life or week-to-week life look like with you inside of their B&B boot camp? What did it look like in your first, let's call it 30 days? Uh, so first 30 days, um, you know, I actually, I put quite a bit of work in, um, not necessarily with their program. Cause I think in, in the first 30 days program wise was, you know, probably three or four hours of just learning. Um, but then I was putting in a couple hours a day, uh, searching for new properties during that time. Uh, you know, I would say 10 to 15 hours a week uh, is pretty realistic for when I was really in that growth mode in the beginning. Got it. Okay. So we all, we always talk about side hustles here on the channel. So a 10 to 15 to 20 hour per week as a side hustle um, within your first year, what were you kind of netting out after that? Yeah, I guess. So first 12 months after getting into BNB bootcamp, my net now is right around nine to 11,000 on the properties that we have per month. Per month, yeah. Yeah, and I, I had a little bird whisper in my ear earlier that you are now self-employed. I am, as of uh, yesterday. <laughs> so let's talk about that. How does yeah. that feel? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> what does that feel like? What does that look like for you? Why did you decide to make that transition? So, I mean, it still doesn't feel completely real. Uh, it feels like I'm on vacation right now and I'm supposed to be going back next week or something, but, um, no, it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, you know, just the fact that I didn't have to wake up to an alarm this morning, I just woke up when I woke up and started getting to work on, um, I'm actually in a property right now that we're setting up, uh, for September, but, uh, you know, I was able to just get over here once I was ready to, you know, get up and get to work. Um, so that was pretty incredible and, you know, super exciting to, to be in this position. Um, I think the biggest reason I, I decided to leave, it, it kind of came quicker than I expected was that it's now at this point, it's almost costing me money to go to work. Like I'm making more outside, like almost double what I was making at my job to where any time that's spent there is a waste of time at this point. Yeah, so it's trading time for dollars. So let's talk about that because oftentimes people on the channel, you know, a lot of people that are listening in and, and watching right now are W-2 employees. So mm -hmm. there's a million trepidations with moving towards something else that they're unfamiliar with or uncomfortable with. What was holding you up? Um, holding me up as far as like going so fully self-employed? Well, I mean, whether it was this deal or another deal, I mean, ultimately you mm. want to be 
become your own employer. So this was ultimately the right deal for you. What made you yeah. take that transition? I mean, that's a giant leap of faith. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, the, the thing that was holding me up beforehand was just knowledge in, uh, you know, how to run my own business. I just, I didn't know how to do that. Um, and, you know, I, I always knew I could probably figure it out, but it's terrifying to take that leap and, you know, hope I figure it out in time to, you know, make the money I need to make. So I, I would say that was the biggest thing that held me back in the beginning. And Austin, I'm just, uh, just to chime in here, I'm, I'm curious, um, would you be able to just to talk a little bit more broadly and openly about, cause you had actually been in short-term rentals before we had even discussed with you. So I'm just wondering if you can maybe talk a little bit about that. I'd say about six months, if I recall of the journey that you had getting into the business up to the point when we had started uh, working together. And then, um, you know, what, what, what do things look like now that you've kind of gone through the whole process? Like just maybe talk a little bit more openly about that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, just in general, um, those six months went very average. Um, you know, I, I signed a lease and did rental arbitrage on my first property in March of 2020. Um, you know, at the time, most people would say is the worst time to get into the travel industry. Uh, it was, it's pretty terrifying to do that, but, um, you know, sign that lease and over the next six months from March until September really just kind of scraped by, I'd made like 200 bucks yeah. one month, you know, lost 150 the next and really wasn't going anywhere with it. Um, you know, still enjoyed it cause I was learning, but um, at that, that was the point where I realized like I needed to, to learn what I didn't know. And it's taking me too long to learn that on my own. Um, and so that's when, you know, I reached out to you guys and just on that property, you know, we, we still have that property today. Uh, the biggest difference with working with you guys was that I went from making, you know, maybe 200 bucks in a month on that property to now I'm making every month, at least 1500 on that same property. I didn't change anything other than implementing, you know, what BNB bootcamp taught me. So. Well, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> that's huge. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, we're, that's, we're all just speechless there for a minute. <laughs> quite well. I don't know anyone that doesn't want to seven X uh, their investment. So no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fantastic. So if you could talk about kind of, um, what the boot camp looks like. So, you know, obviously Michael and Katrina are friendly. We keep them on the channel here for obvious reasons. Everyone's been successful. I don't know of any unsuccessful stories at this point. Poke holes, please. I want to play devil's advocate on behalf of the channel every chance I can, just like Matthew does. What do they do wrong? What do they do right? That's a good question. Um... Hmm. I mean, obviously it's easy to say what they do right. Cause I'm, I always look at the positive of things, you know, looking back, I don't, I don't try to hang on the negativity part of it, but um, I think a lot of what people don't expect when getting into this, or maybe it's what people hold, you know, they, this is what hold them back a lot is um, there's, you're, you're still running a business. You're going to run into issues along the way. You're going to run into things where you have no idea what you're doing and you have no idea what to do next. And, um, you know, there's going to be some really, really difficult times in running your own business, right? Just when it comes to short-term rentals, there's always the possibility of someone throwing a party and damaging your place and, uh, stealing things from you. I know when I started with Michael and Katrina, they mentioned someone stole literally everything out of their, one of their properties on their first guest, which is just insane to me like that. I'm so glad I haven't had something like that happen yet, but you know, we've, we've had plenty of tough times and, you know, difficult times and learning instances and all that. So yeah, so I, I mean, I think the thing for the audience to remember is when you're getting involved in a new venture, there are going to be highs and lows, right? Mm -hmm. Everything in between. So, you know, it's kind of having that intestinal fortitude to work through those. And it sounds like you have. So maybe you didn't crush it right out of the gate, but you're a year in right now. You've got nine properties. And when you started, you had one, correct? Yep. That's correct. So can we talk about monetary values, if you don't mind me asking? Sure. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're at nine properties now. Um, you know, on average, those properties do 
right around 4,000 a month in bookings. So, you know, this year we're looking at about th- just a little over 300,000 in, uh, in bookings for not for 2021, but like if we go one year from today to next year, it should be right around 300,000 or so. And we'll, we'll keep well over a hundred of that, which is more than double my income uh, that I was making before. So just to be, just to be clear, Austin. So before you had come through the program, you said you were, you know, some months would be a couple hundred bucks here down some months, like on app, like a couple hundred dollars essentially to the good. And now to a stage where grossing 300, keeping a hundred thousand in your pocket in just under a year. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yep. Yeah. And along the same lines, are you doing uh, mostly partnerships or arbitrage at this point? Uh, mostly partnerships. Cause that's the easiest way to scale for sure. Um, you know, it's much harder to pick up a bunch of arbitrage properties when you're putting all the money into those. Um, so right now we're one third our arbitrage and the rest are partnership. Yeah. And Michael and Katrina, uh, I mean, that's a, a really interesting uh, tactic on, on how you guys have done this. I had not heard of it before I ran into y'all. If you guys could describe the difference between arbitrage and partnership for the audience, that would be phenomenal. Yeah, sure. Um, so the biggest difference is both techniques are essentially accomplishing the same objective in that we are controlling other people's properties without having to own them. And we're able to generate very healthy incomes off of those assets. But the biggest difference is the way in which you control the property. They're both done through the way of agreements, uh, but one way involves you still having to incur upfront investment in order to get that property set up and off the ground. So this would be the rental arbitrage method. So the idea there is essentially, rather than buying a property and paying a mortgage to a bank, we're essentially controlling someone else's property through the way of a lease agreement and then selling the nights at a higher price than what it costs us to carry that property on a month to month basis. Yeah. And this is, I mean, to get into the real estate game or, you know, it is a really inexpensive way to get in rather than going the other route of buying a property, you know, um, putting 20% down, furnishing it and, you know, using your credit, everything like that. I mean, to get into rental arbitrage, like this is a really, I guess, um, inexpensive and quick way to get into that to start creating cash flow. But really, when you're looking at growing and scaling, there is still costs involved, as Michael mentioned. So, right, there's um, damage deposit, there's lease agreement every month, and then furnishing. So, really, when you're looking at a scalability factor, if you just eliminate all three of those um, and then you start partnering with landlords um, and really offer yourself as a service-based uh, business rather than you know operating it and getting you know all those three things down that's when you get into partnerships. And really at that point, you're just signing a piece of paper, partnering with the landlord, managing that property. And then essentially you're just, how many pieces of paper can you sign to get to your income goal? And you're not taking on um, really any financial risk at that point. Yeah, so the difference there is that um, instead of actually even paying a lease or having to invest in furnishings into the property, when you partner with them, essentially what's happening is you are just basically splitting on the income that that property makes and presenting it to the landlord saying, well, look, your property actually has a lot more income potential than what you're currently asking for in monthly rent by turning into a short-term rental. So if you agree to make the investment in furnishings so that we can help you get this off the ground and up and running, well, not only can you make a lot more money with your property, but you don't even have to do any of the work because that's where we come in. We actually will partner with you to to give you access to the short-term rental market to be able to do that. So one, again, just for a quick summary, rental arbitrage, pay landlord rent every month, rent the nights at a higher price. Partnering, we're just splitting on the income that um, that we produce for the homeowner. We don't have any lease or upfront cost at all. And because of that dynamic, we actually don't have any risk in these transactions either. Just reputational risk of making sure you perform for your partners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, 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 of course. So um, guys, obviously there's gonna be some moving pieces here, moving parts, which is why Michael and Katrina exist. B&B Bootcamp at VIPfinancialeducation.com if you want more information right now. All right, guys, it sounds easy to go to a landlord, tired landlord, someone that's got a property, you know, either they're a homeowner under contract. Well, how do you get them to do a partnership like this? How do you get them to ultimately 
pay for furnishings while you go out there. Is it all math? Are you guys scripting this out? Is this part of the training? If you could break that down. Yeah, so we'll tackle this a couple of different ways. So your first question about like the dynamics of the how you actually do this. Well, a few things you have to remember when you're actually going out and having these conversations with landlords. What a lot of people don't realize is that sometimes being a landlord isn't what it's all cracked up to be, right? In the majority of the time, people that are landlords or own investment property, they generally don't make that much on the property when they have a tenant. You know, on average, what we tend to find is they might have actually some landlords actually lose money on their investment properties on a monthly basis. They're just holding it because they hope the property will go up in value, which is a very risky bet to make. But if they do make money, they might either break even on the property, maybe a couple hundred dollars a month to the good. And that's assuming the tenant doesn't, you know, that's assuming the tenant actually pays rent, right? Sometimes they don't have great tenants, mm -hmm. right? Where they either don't pay or they don't take care of the property. So by and large, what we're saying is that the reason why someone's even open to this idea in the first place, because they're trying to get away from the result that they're currently getting, which is not giving them the end result of what they ultimately want. Most people we find are amenable to this idea is because the reason why they got into real estate in the first place is they're essentially wanting to have something for their retirement. They want to own an asset that's gonna pay them every single month, but they wanna do it in a way that's passive so they don't have to get involved in the day-to-day -day affairs. So this is where we come in. Yeah, and, and that's a big thing when we're looking at this is like, essentially it's like, what are you offering? What benefits? It is really a win-win-win situ situation. It's a win for the landlord because they're gonna participate in short-term rentals without having to do the work. Um, it's a win for us, obviously we're creating income from it and it's a win for guests as well because you're having an amazing experience and a place for them to stay. So when we're creating this kind of space and it's the way you're offering it, positioning it and showing the benefits, I mean, we do take care of everything. We take care of cleans, we take care of the handyman, take care of guests. We are fully taking care of the property, making sure it's show home ready. That's a huge benefit. And it's at, you know, it's not at a, some kind of, um, you know, management fee, I guess it's in our way, it's like a, it's a cut of the revenue, but typically, you know, when you're looking at long-term uh, management companies, they're going to take between 10 to 15%. And that's, you know, then they only do the monthly rent. And that's only when the places are vacant or when it's actually filled. If it's vacant, I mean, they don't pay that cost in between there, right? So if you're looking from a risk standpoint, this is a, a really good option for them to get into it. Yeah. And I mean, let's again, play devil's advocate. Does every single person we talk to like fall over themselves to get into doing this? I mean, obviously no. I mean, Austin, um, he'd be the first one to tell you, I mean, in, so he's in Boise, Idaho, uh, and we can have him speak to this. Um, it's an extremely hot market. It's very competitive. So, and one thing like Austin said earlier that really stood out to me is like, it was hard work. You know, it's, it was just kind of a cakewalk. Like he, Austin really, he hustled and a lot, you know, it wasn't just a couple of conversations. He had talked to multiple landlords, but really craft his offer until it was really dialed in, but he hustled and he did the work and he honed into it. So I, I guess Austin, maybe if you can kind of dive in, cause I think before we had even started, you, to my knowledge, I mean, I'll have you confirm this, but like you weren't even necessarily aware of the idea of partnering with people in the first place, right? You were just more kind of on that rental arbitrage centric path with short-term rentals. Is that correct? I mean, I knew it was a thing, but I had no idea where to start. Okay. No clue. So that, that was the part for me is like, if I was to even attempt to do that, I wouldn't even know how. So yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, Boise, you know, this last year has been extremely hot and I know a lot of places across the U S have, have, you know, over this last year, it's been just crazy in a lot of places, but, um, just as an example, you know, when I'm reaching out to owners that have a place for rent, by the time I've reached out to them, maybe four or five hours after they've listed their property for rent, they've also, they've already received like 20 to 30 applications on that property. And so by that time, I have to be offering them such a good value for them to even consider talking to me. Otherwise, it's just a waste of both of our times. And so, you know, with that, I would say I probably have gone through more owners and landlords than most people would uh, in a normal situation, just trying to find the properties that I have. So 
Oh, uh, so just to be clear, it's an absolute numbers game. So what you did, you yep. pulled your sleeves, correct? Mm -hmm. you pulled your sleeves. You were determined to make this business model work for you, and ultimately now you're deep into six figures, and you quit. You quit your W two. Yeah, I mean, to me, it didn't really matter how many times I had to ask people, you know, I, I saw the potential of, you know, where I could be and where I am now, um, as the end goal. And so it didn't really matter what it took for me to get here. And, you know, no matter how many owners I had to go through, just yeah. it was going to happen. There was no question of me stopping or, you know, doing less or anything. No, I love that. I love that, uh, uh that fortitude there. Um, Michael and Katrina. So, Obviously, we've got moratoriums, forbearances, lifting on rental and um, mortgages. What does that do for your model? Well, I think there's uh, a couple dynamics in play, but um, from the opportunity standpoint, um, we are more excited about this business than we ever have been because um, you have to put yourself in the position of the landlord in this case, because mm -hmm. again, the reason why someone would even entertain this conversation that you're, I mean, we ultimately show people how to have these conversations to begin with is because you are bringing a lot more value to the table than the experience that they're currently having with their current set of circumstances. So on the topic of rent moratoriums, forbearances, all of these different factors. COVID, the pandemic, everything. You know, there, there has been a large amount of landlords that have not been receiving rent on their properties for, you know, months, a, a, even a year. You know, quite some time, right? And ultimately, those bills still have to get paid at some point. So, you know, we always tell people when they come into the training that, you know, the idea of partnerships and partnership opportunities they're absolutely everywhere. You just have to look for them, but know how to have a very skilled conversation with someone so that by the time you're done speaking with them and showing them what you do and how you help, it's like a foregone conclusion that they would rather work with you than rather than going with what they know and renting the property to a long-term tenant, which, you know, as you're saying, may not have been paying them for you know quite some time. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of tired landlords out there right now that have not been receiving those rents. Uh, you know, what kind of happens over the, the balance of the next handful of months is, you know, again, I would pay a lot of money for that crystal ball, but it's going to be really interesting to see. I think it's going to translate really well into this uh, short-term rental market. You know, people that are wanting to get out, maybe liquidate their portfolio and do so while making the maximum dollar. I think you guys are a great avenue for them. Austin, let me get your parting shots here, brother. I mean, biggest thing for me is uh, just don't don't waste time. You know, if, if you put the time into this, like, I, you know, looking back, I wish I put more time in the beginning because I'd be even further than where I am now. Um, you know, I would say that, you know, Final thoughts, stop wasting time and just get to it. Yeah, that's that's huge. And I mean, that's probably of our most successful students are people who take the action. They take the action, they commit and they hit the ground running. And I mean, Austin, you did amazing. Like one property to nine and to really utilize partnerships and to grow and scale the way you've done has just been incredible in such a hot market. So, I mean, we're super proud as coaches and we love that you've created a six figure business in less than a year that's that's incredible to us that's suit we're super proud and and to leave your job and to leave your job yeah <laughs> and i think you, you uh you have a baby on the way don't you i do two months oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> <laughs> um so guys y'all that are tuned into the channel right now you guys have seen that we have continued to bring folks on that have followed a specific recipe blueprint uh, roadmap for success. It does not take rocket science to make a lot of money. You have to be coachable. You have to be trainable. You have to be a sponge. Michael and Katrina, obviously, we're going to go ahead and drop the link below to contact them at BNB Bootcamp at VIPFinancialEducation.com. Obviously, we love having folks on like Austin, who is a true testament to success, went from one property to nine properties and approximately one year quit his W-2. Now he's living the dream, baby on the way. Best of luck.
<laughs> uh, but guys, we're going to continue to bring stuff on here like this. So we dropped the link below for the email if you're interested. Uh, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button below if you want more information like this from Michael and Katrina. Um, obviously, uh, more testimonials like this from Austin and other folks. Austin, safe to assume you might come back on and give us an update here in the next few months. Hey, I'd be happy to. Fantastic. Well, we certainly appreciate that. Guys, go ahead and subscribe below. If you're not, if you are, tell friends and family. We are, as a, are always looking for like-minded folks to come here on the channel. And of course, hitting that bell below when you want more notifications from the VIP Financial Education YouTube channel. We talk about all things credit, capital, and cash flow. All right, Austin, we're going to let you run. Michael and Katrina, always a pleasure. Love y'all. Yeah, no, thank you. We appreciate it. This is always fun. Thanks, Austin, for taking time out today. So yeah. appreciate it as well. Of course. No problem. Okay. See you guys. Yeah, good connecting. Have a good one. Chat with you guys later. All right. Talk bye. Yep. Bye.